So you want to grow food for you and your family. A survival garden could be the answer, but what does that really mean? And how do you begin? Well, let's talk about that today. Join me as I discuss how to start a survival garden. Hi, I'm Gardener Scott, and in this bed and my other vegetable garden beds, I'll be growing food crops this year. Now, I've been gardening for more than three decades, so I don't call it a survival garden. I just call it my vegetable garden. The term survival garden has really been in the news lately because a lot of people are starting to turn to that concept of growing their own food with the intent that they're going to feed themselves and their family. They'll survive on the food that they're growing. I've been doing this long enough that I know what seeds grow best in my garden and what foods I'm going to eat that I grow in my garden. But for someone new to gardening, maybe like you, or someone who's been gardening who wants to shift towards that survival aspect, growing your own food, there are some important factors. First among them, the seeds. What is it you're going to grow? You don't want to have to go to the store and buy all your plants. You really want to start growing from seed. So I turned to Survival Garden Seeds, which is a great company and sells these kits, bags and boxes of seeds that you can start growing and have a survival garden. This is a 30 seed pack. This is a 50 seed pack. And in this, there are a hundred different packets of seeds, all for different purposes. And I'll be going through these to give you an idea of how to start a survival garden, especially if you decide to use a kit like this. And I like the survival garden seeds because these seed packets work out to less than one dollar per packet, which is a great price. And we can get an idea based on their recommendations in these kits, what it is we should be growing. How many seed packets you need will be determined by how many plants you expect to grow. And the number of plants will be determined by how big your vegetable garden is. In this area of six vegetable garden beds, each of these are four feet wide and eight feet long. I can grow dozens of different food crops throughout the entire growing season. And because of my experience, because of the tips and tricks I know, I can actually start early and grow late if I protect the plants. And so when you do that, when you know all of those steps to get a very long season, you can expect that it will be two beds minimum per person to give you an ample amount of food in your diet. But if you just start off trying to grow this big, it might be overwhelming. So I always recommend start small. Start with just a bed or two for a season or two so that you can figure it out. And over time, you'll be able to get to that point that you can be growing food for your family. And as you choose your seeds, you need to think about your garden becoming sustainable. You don't want to have to buy seeds every single year, and you definitely don't want to have to buy plants for everything that you're going to grow. One of the nice things about the survival garden seeds is that they are heirloom seed packets. Now, heirloom seeds means that you can grow the plant, let it flower and set seed, and then save those seeds to grow the exact same plant year after year. When you go to the store to buy seeds in general, it might be a hybrid seed. You can't save those seeds and expect to get the same results, the same type of plant. You really need to look for heirloom seed packets if you're serious about growing food for your family in a sustainable way. Let's go ahead and take a look at what's in this 30 seed packet bag. As I pull the seeds out of this package, my first observation is there are a lot of solid food crops in this mix. 
I've got arugula, basil, beets. Now beets are a wonderful plant to grow because you can eat the root and you can eat the leaves. There's cabbage, there's carrots, there's lemon balm. I'm gonna set this to the side for a moment. I've got radish, spinach, a couple different types of tomatoes, three different types of tomatoes. I'll set those to the side. I've got some melon, some winter squash, some zucchini, turnips, another great root crop that you can eat the root and the leaves, cilantro, cucumber, dill, eggplant, kale, Swiss chard, there's lettuce, a different melon, okra, parsley, and then a few different types of peppers. And so I'm dividing these into different categories. One, the primary food crops, and in this bag, most of them I call salad crops. The lettuce, the spinach, those root crops that you're going to eat the leaves of. And then there's some nice melons and squashes as well. These tomatoes and peppers are awesome to grow in the garden. But if you're going to start them from seed, you need to start them weeks before you put the plant in the ground. So these pepper seeds should be started indoors 10 to 12 weeks before the plant's going to go outside. And these tomatoes, six to eight weeks is usually a good idea to start the seeds. The lemon balm, the parsley, the dill, the cilantro, this is a great thing to think about when you are growing your own food. This is what you're going to use to season the dishes that you make. The plants like this parsley, dill, and cilantro are really needed, I think, in a survival garden because you've got to think about how you're going to eat your food crops. We all know that the food you grow in your own garden tastes much, much better than anything you could buy at the store. But you need to season the dishes you're going to eat. You need to grow some herbs in your garden. And they usually don't take up much space. You can grow all of these herbs in between all of these other plants. And then when you harvest your food crops, you have something to use in the recipe to make them taste even better. And then you have a plant like this lemon balm. Lemon balm can be eaten, but it has so many beautiful flowers to attract the pollinators that you need to think about that aspect of a survival garden as well. So you have the plants you're going to grow to eat, you have the plants you're going to grow to season what you eat, and you need to grow plants that will flower to attract the pollinators. Another important factor when you're thinking about the plants you're going to grow in your survival garden is more than just what you're going to harvest and eat in the same day. You need to think about food preservation. How are you going to preserve your harvest so that it lasts you well into the winter? And that's why something like this delicata winter squash is so good. It's called a winter squash because it can keep for months and months. After you harvest it, just store it in a nice, cool, dark pantry, and it lasts a long time. And plants like okra and beets can be fermented or pickled to last a long time. Or a beet in your refrigerator will probably last as long as you want it to last before you work it into your diet. So I really like this assortment of these 30 packs of seeds. New gardeners and experienced gardeners alike should be able to grow all of these plants in a garden, as long as you understand the timing of when you need to start the seeds. If you get a packet like this early in the year, then you'll have plenty of time to start the tomatoes and the peppers and the eggplants, which do best when you start them ahead of time. The rest of these can be sown directly in the garden and you can expect some pretty good results. Let's go ahead and compare that one with this one, the 50 seed pack. Initially, I see some of the same type of plants, the basil, pepper, the eggplant, but now we have something like buckwheat, which is loaded with nutrition and vitamins and great to be growing in a survival garden. Here's a seed packet that is specifically labeled pollinator mix. 
and it's a collection of different flowers to attract all of those beneficial insects. Here's some more beets, but now we've got a couple different type of beets, and this Detroit Golden is incredibly delicious. And now they've added beans as well. Beans are another high calorie, dense with nutrient kind of plant that you should consider growing in your garden. A lot of the others, the spinach, the peppers, the radish, the carrots, the cabbage. And how about onions? Onions take some time to grow, and it's one of those things that you don't really think about how much you use onions in your diet until you don't have onions to use in your recipe. So a great plant to grow. Peppers, lettuce, kale, Swiss chard, more lettuce, there's some melons, and here's a royal burgundy bean, another wonderful bean to grow. This Montnarda, the bergamot, wonderful for attracting pollinators. More parsley and okra. And now we start getting into black-eyed peas, another nutrient-rich crop, easy to grow. One of the nice things about growing both beans and peas is that you can grow peas when your weather is cool. So in early spring and in autumn, you can be growing peas. In summer, the peas don't like the heat as much, but the beans do. So the way you can get a lot of food in a single bed is you vary the plants you're growing. It's called succession planting. In the spring, you'll grow the peas, you'll harvest them, and then you'll plant the beans, harvest them, and then put the peas back in again. So in a single bed, you might be able to get three distinct harvests of different crops to really sustain your survival garden. Winter squash, this is a spaghetti squash. This will save for months through the winter until you can use it. Leeks are like onions, more pepper, dill, Sunflowers, a great plant to grow to attract the insects, but you can also eat most of the sunflower plant. Lovage, mustard greens, popcorn, that's a fun one. We think about growing corn in a survival garden, but how about popcorn? Keep the kids and your family happy by growing something like that. We've got gourds, we've got regular corn, the lemon balm again, tomatoes, turnips, more tomatoes, more cucumbers, melons, cilantro, the delicata squash again, a different type of zucchini, and more beans. So if you've got the space, think about expanding the kind of plants that you would be growing in a survival garden to include some of these extra winter squashes and the plants like the peas and the beans. I really like this selection as well. And remember, all of these are heirloom plants. So if you let them flower and save the seeds, you'll be able to plant them again the next year. I really can't disagree with any of the selection that we have in this Survival Garden Seeds Kit. There's a lot of packets here that will grow a lot of plants, but all of them make sense to grow in a survival garden. But don't think that you have to grow everything in a packet like this. You can choose your survival garden plants. If you don't eat beets, well, then don't grow beets. If you don't eat turnips, don't grow turnips. But these have all been selected for very specific reasons, for those pollination issues, for the preservation issues, and because survival garden crops usually need to have the nutrients and the calories that our diet requires. So maybe these weren't ones you would have picked, but consider growing some of these if you're serious about the survival garden. And 50 different plants, might be an awful lot for a beginning gardener to tackle. Don't worry about it. All of these seed packets should be expected to last for at least three, maybe even five years if you don't get to it in the first season for planting. So all those tomatoes that you weren't able to start from seed this year, you can save and start from seed next year. Now let's look at the 100 package box. And remember, these packets work out to about a dollar each, which 
is very affordable for a $30 or $50 set. But as we start looking at this $100 set, I think 100 seed packets for $100 is actually a bargain. And because I can save any of these packages that I don't plant this year or even next year, and because these are heirloom seeds where I can save my own seeds, I may never need to buy seeds again. So I already see most of the same, but let's go ahead and highlight some of the new types of plants that are in this package. A plant like asparagus. When you're serious about growing food for yourself and for your family, you should be thinking about perennial vegetable garden plants. Asparagus will come back year after year for about 20 or 25 years. Wonderful to grow. You put it in place and you just keep harvesting it year after year. Brussels sprouts tends to be one of those plants that a lot of us don't grow, we don't think about, but if you've got the space and once you develop the experience level to have something like Brussels sprouts, it's a nice addition to your diet. Chives, I've got chives growing right over there. I've been growing chives for years. They come back year after year. Another great thing to add flavor to your diet. Here's salvia. This is a Victoria blue sage, probably the best plant that I grow to attract bees. One day in particular on my salvia, I saw five different types of bees being drawn to these flowers. Wonderful for the pollinators. A couple different types of eggplants. We've got some fennel, different types of cabbages, a whole bunch of different types of carrots. We've got celery. Celery wasn't in the other blends. We've got a whole bunch of different types of melons now, different types of onions, oregano, pak choy. Pak choy falls into that category of the plants that you can grow and get multiple harvests depending on the time of the season that you're growing them. More peppers, more melons, a whole bunch of melons. A couple different types of zucchinis to include golden zucchini. I love golden zucchini. And different types of flowers like morning glory, calendula, daisy, echinacea, nasturtium, marigolds, forget-me-nots, lavender. This is a wonderful blend. So think of this in terms of you growing plants learning how to grow in your specific garden, and then developing the experience to expand your garden. In the first year or two, everything in this 30 or 50 seed selection would be ideal. If you've got plenty of space, or you want to experiment with different plants over a number of years, I've grown almost everything in this box, but I haven't necessarily grown the specific varieties that they include in this box. It just makes me want to grow as much as I can, but I do need to be selective. And so now let's go ahead and look at a couple of these seed packets. You need to consider the mature size of the plants when you're selecting your seeds, and planning out your garden. Because while I would love to grow a hundred different plants, there's just no way I can do that in these six vegetable garden beds. I'm looking at this pole bean, the Kentucky Wonder, which can climb up one of these trellises. Growing vertically allows you to grow more plants in a smaller space. These should be thin to three to four inches apart, and then I can grow a whole bunch of them in a trellis. But this provider bean is a little bit different. This grows a little bushier and they need to be spaced eight to 12 inches apart. So while both of these beans can grow in the garden, which one would you choose? One that you can grow more plants in a smaller space if you have a trellis or another one that grows fewer plants, but Maybe you have an out-of-the-way corner that you can use. And then when you start getting to the melons, like this heart of gold, well, these need to be spaced three feet apart between plants. So as I'm choosing what goes in these different beds, I might only be able to get 
three or four of the melon plants in a single bed. How important are the melons? Are they more important than cabbage or carrots or beets that you can fill a bed with? These beets have a spacing of about four inches apart. So imagine how many more beets you can grow than melons. A lot of it comes down to what you want, how much space you have, and what your plan calls for. And you really should develop a gardening plan. Getting one of these kits of survival seeds is a great way to start. It can generate a lot of thought about what you can grow and what you can't grow, how many beds you need, and what you need to know about the specific plants. How big are they going to grow? How long do they take to grow? You need to know all of that before you put the seed in the ground. Start developing your plan today. Start figuring out what you're going to grow today. And if you don't have the seed packages yet, consider getting something like these packets from Survival Garden Seeds. And I'll put a link below so that you can check out these kits that give you everything you want in the beginning. How many beds? Start with one, maybe two. Start figuring it out. Start your survival garden small. And then as you get more confidence, more ability to grow plants, then you can start expanding. We all want to feed our families, but just realize you probably can't do it overnight or even in a single year. Gardening takes time to figure out. And it takes a lot of time to get it right so that you can rely on your garden and your plants to feed your family in a survival garden. I'm Gardener Scott. Enjoy gardening. Mm -hmm.